Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new, thank you for checking out. And if you're returning, thank you for returning. As we continue this journey of faith. And that's actually what we are going to talk about today is faith. Uh, you have to work at it. You know, faith doesn't just happen. You really need to keep your faith alive. You know, it's, it's okay to say that you have faith. But if you don't practice your faith, what good is your faith? You know, if, if you don't read the Bible, if you don't pray, if you don't go to church, do you really have faith? And yes, you need to go to church. I know a lot of people have this idea that you don't need to go to church. You do need to go to church. Jesus went to church. God told his people to build him a temple. You know, all these other gods have temples. Build me a temple so they know that I am the one true God. You, know, you, you have to do these things. You have to practice your faith. If you want to be good at something, you have to practice it. You know, if you want to play piano, you're not just automatically going to start playing, you know, Beethoven and Bach. You have to learn how to play piano. If you want to play baseball, you're not just going to go and start hitting home runs. You know, you have to learn to play baseball. And the same thing is with your faith. You know, it, you have to nurture it. You have to let it grow. It's, faith is an endless journey. It's endless education. It's endless growth. Uh, it's a race. You have to keep going in the race, and unfortunately the finish line is when you die. <laughs> so you always have to grow on your faith. And I know there, there might be some people who, you know, will say, well, I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at right now. And, I, you know, I think I, I understand what you're saying, but you really shouldn't just be comfortable in your faith. You know, if you're so-called comfortable in your fit faith, I think you're just kind of like, well, I don't know what else to do. And that's fine. That's totally okay. And, you know, and we're, all, we're not all called to be priests or nuns or, or religious professions. But you can still keep going and growing and learning in your faith. You know, read the Bible. Even if you read the passage a thousand times, read it a thousand and one times. Because that thousand and one time, you can get something new out of it. You know, that's how God works. You know, in, in order to grow in your faith, you have to have good works. You know, if, if you don't have good works, your faith is worse, worthless. And if you have good works but you don't have faith, again, pretty sure I've mentioned that before, it's worthless. You know, people should look at you and see Jesus Christ in you and see that you are a Christian, not what the world believes a Christian to be, because that's been totally just destroyed, and Jesus Christ, who he actually is, has been totally destroyed, which is why you have to read your Bible. Read your Bible. That's the real Lord. But if people can't see Jesus Christ in you, if people can't see the good works, are you really practicing your faith? If you don't keep, you know, God's commandments, if you don't take care of those in need, poor, sick, and hungry, visit the lonely. If you don't do these things, do you really have faith? Do you know your faith and what you're supposed to be doing in your faith? A lot of us don't. And, you know, just because you go to church and, and you can quote scripture doesn't really mean you have faith either. You have to be very careful with that. Even Satan can quote scripture. Satan knows God. Do you keep the Lord's commandments? Can people see that in you? Can they see that light? And I know a lot of people say, well, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Especially in this world that wants absolutely nothing to do with God and only a Christian idea of what they think a Christian should be and not what a true Christian is. It's very hard. Came to my faith was it six years ago now. I still know nothing. I still have a long way to go, a lot to learn. It's going to take time. It's going to take work. But that's what faith is. And you can't, you can't let it dry out. If you stay stagnant, you're not going to go anywhere. That's not faith. Yes, I believe in the Lord. Yes, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of Man. He's the Messiah. He's our Savior. And you can say all these things, but unless you put it into practice, 
it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. And it's hard. It is very hard. I know that it is hard. You know, when you start acting how God wills you and wants you to act, people are going to come after you because they have this idea of what the world tells them a Christian should be and who God is. And they don't really know. You know, and that's your job as a Christian to let people know who God is and, and what faith actually is and what being a Christian actually means. But we have fallen so far away that we just we don't know anymore. And when people actually do it, you're called, you know, you're not a good Christian, you fail as a Christian, all these things. And it is very hard. You know, faith is more than just going to church in reading your Bible and praying, you have to put it into practice. You have to put it in motion. Do you produce good fruit? You know, you shouldn't have to tell me that you do. You know, you see a lot on social media nowadays, all these emotional abuse, mental manipulation posts, and some of them are religious as well. You know, say amen if you believe in Jesus. Repost this if you love the Lord. Keep scrolling if you love Satan. You know, don't fall for any of that nonsense, uh, even those outside of the religious uh, sector, because there, there's a lot of those posts out there, you know? Oh, one in four people are afraid to repost this. So many people are hurting if you love them, blah, blah, blah. It, ignore, that's garbage. That's, that's rubbish. And again, that's not faith. <laughs> you know, when your time comes, God's not going to look at you and be like, well, they never prayed and you never went to church, so... You can't be like, well, Lord, I, you know, I reposted that Facebook post of you. You know, guys, and be like, oh, well, hey, phew. Chica, come on in. That's not going to happen. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using, you know, social media to spread the love and word of God. Obviously, I'm doing it on YouTube. That'd be hypocritical. But who are you doing it for? Are you doing it because you actually love the Lord? Are you doing it for your own clout? To make yourself look good? If you're a Christian, you shouldn't have to tell me that. I should know just by looking at you, just by your actions, by the way you talk, by the way you present yourself, if you are a follower of Christ. It's as simple as that, but it's hard. It's very hard. In a world that we give so much into our own pleasures and desires, it's hard. You know, we're as humans, you know, God created us so special because we're animal, but we're also divine. We have a spirit, we have a soul. And it, in, the, in the New Testament, it's talked all the time about, about this battle between the flesh and the spirit. And the flesh is we just give into our earthly desires, our feelings, our pleasures. And we kind of let our spirit just dwindle, dry up. You know, you have to nourish the spirit. You have to keep it strong. Because if you keep your spirit strong, you can keep your flesh in check. You can gain control. Self-control, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's, it's, I'm sure many people have heard this story of, um, is it, in, is it a Native American proverb? Um, about two wolves. Some of you may know it. There's, um, you know, this grandfather's telling his grandson that each person has two wolves inside of them. One's good, one's evil. And they're in constant battle with each other. And the grandson asks, well, which one wins? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. And that's the same thing with us. If we feed our flesh all the time, our spirit is going to rot away. But if we feed our spirit, it's going to grow and be strong and be able to keep our flesh in check, keep us from sinning, know when we sin, repent, continue to grow in our faith, continue to understand and grow in our faith. And that is extremely important. It is so important to keep going and educating yourself in faith. Never be stagnant. You know, it, you can do so much just by praying. And you can give so much, even if you think it's stupid and insignificant. You know, if, if you live with someone and they're always washing the dishes, wash the dishes once in a while for them. That would be good works. That would be producing good fruit. It's hard in a world that doesn't want it, but you have to do it. You have to let your faith grow. Otherwise, it's it's useless. It doesn't mean anything. You know, reposting something on Facebook, yes, it's good to get the Lord's message and love out there, 
but that's not going to save you. That's not faith, especially if you're doing it for yourself. You know, I, I tell people all the time, good characteristics, good quality does not need a PR team. You know, if you have to boast about how good you are, how great you are, oh, I'm a good father, I'm a good friend, I'm a good blah, blah, blah. Are you really these things? Why do you have to tell me? I should just know. I should see it. And if you're a good Christian, you would be practicing your faith. You would be going to church. You would be reading your Bible. You would be praying. And you wouldn't stop. And it's hard. Yes, it's hard. But it's something you're called to do. And even if you are so-called comfortable in your faith, you know, just keep reading the Bible. Keep praying. Keep going to church. You know, God has a plan for you. I can't tell you what that is. Whatever it may be, and it can be the simplest task that you may think is simple, but to God it's grand. If you complete it, if you, you know, finish it. It's not easy, it's very hard, but we're all called to keep doing it, to keep practicing our faith. You know, Jesus Christ had someone ask him, and you know, he wanted to be his disciples, and, you know, what do I have to do? Keep the commandments, and he goes, well, I do all this. Well, then you have to let all this riches and pleasures go if you want to follow me. And the young man walked back very distraught because he had so many good things, so many riches. He didn't want to give them up to follow the Lord. That's what you have to do. It's hard. It's a step not many people take, not willing to take. They think they're good enough, that you're good enough in this world that just seems so lost and evil. Well, I'm not like these people. I'm, I'm, I'm better than them. I've never done this. I've never done anything bad. Well, I'm sorry, but when your judgment day comes, God's not whipping out a Venn diagram. <laughs> you see, okay, well, you weren't as bad as these people, and you're better than these people, and you get that. It's, it's you and you alone, what you did and what you failed to do. And if you at least practice your faith, you can say, God, I tried. And he's going to see that. You have to try. It's a muscle. You can't grow a muscle if you don't work out. Spirit is the same way. Faith is the same way. You have to feed and nourish your spirit. You have to make it strong constantly. And it's a lot to take in, too. You know, I've become overwhelmed with how much there is to learn. And, you know, the Roman Catholic Church has so many rules and so many, so much history, even. It's a lot to handle. You know, I just ask God, help me to do what I can. I know I'm not going to know all of this. Help me to do what I can. Help me to do your will. Please keep going in faith. Thank you. I'll see you all next time. Hi, everyone. Just popping in real quick to make sure you check out this channel's Twitter account. Link will be in the description. And I will see you all in the Twitter world. All right. Thank you.